Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you can hear me. Please let me know if you are with me right now, if you are live with me, if you can hear me clearly. Should be able to hear me. I just want to make sure that my mic is well set up here. Hey, Rusty. Thank you. Oh, perfect. You hear me clearly. That's awesome. Thank you very much. All right. So as you can see by the title, or as you saw by the title tonight, you're sort of painting and building a miniature along with me. Now, a lot of people have already answered my poll about me painting Warhammer on the channel. Well, yes, I know this is Warhammer, but uh, this is an interesting model because this model is actually an older model. This is actually one that they're going to replace. Okay. So games workshop is actually going to be replacing this model. Um, so here's the, the old box. This is the old box here. All right. Uh, the new guy is going to be the same name. It's slaves to darkness, demon prince or demon prince. Uh, you're still going to get one miniature. Now I think this guy's a little bit smaller than the new one. Uh, but as you can see, we're going to have some fun with this tonight. All right. So I'm going to be using airbrushes, paints, all sorts of cool stuff. So you can see, I got my airbrush over here. I got some parts of the guy here. I got my wet palette here, ready to go to for later. Uh, and, uh, so if you're ready to go, let's take a look here and, uh, start looking at what we're going to build. So the first choice we have to make, all right, is what are we going to go with the, uh, Age of Sigmar version, which is this version, or the 40k version. Now it says steps one through two, three to five, and you know, and then you can change the head, you can change the arm. I'm almost tempted to just go with whatever I feel like putting on this guy, like either his armor or whatever, and just going with the flow and seeing how that works, like how that comes out. Um, yeah, so we're going to start by building and get my good old glue here. Sigmar. Okay, so you think the uh, the first demon, uh, so he's got the light tone. Do you want to do you want to just build it like that? Let's not change much. Let's just go with the instructions here. What do you think? Yeah, the flow. <laughs> All right. Here here we go. Let's start off. Now, the one thing that's simple on this miniature is actually the legs because you have no choice. All right. So you have to put on the legs the way they are. Now, I just have to remember which way they go. So I'm going to dry fit it right here. Here we go. So I'm dry fitting. Whoop. Okay, so it goes like that. Let's get the glue open. Now, you guys aren't going to smell this. No, not am I. But anyways, it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> all right. Mix and match is fine. All right. Awesome. Uh, don't forget, if you're uh, new to the channel, you can hit subscribe. If you're not new to the channel, hit that like button. And also, you can join now. You can become a member. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Help support this wonderful hobby of mine. Okay, let's get that in there. And I just glued myself. But that's okay. This glue, look at that. Amazing. This is not your typical, um, what you would call it, super glue. This is real plastic glue, like actual four uh, the hobby now i do have my airbrush here and i sometimes just put a little bit of air on it now i don't know if you hear my airbrush or not in the background or the machine going off i let that dry and we're gonna do the other leg here all right so i'm gonna get a little bit of glue here <laughs> well that's so funny a little bit of glue on there and then shove that it's always tricky with these miniatures to figure out how they go together. Whoop. Got my hand all over that glue again. But like I said, doesn't matter. And this stuff dries really quickly. A um, little bit of air. Some people actually use like hair dryers and stuff like that. Uh, but we're just going to let this settle in here. All right. So those are going to dry there. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, awesome. Perfect. So it is blocking out the back. This is the first time I stream directly on YouTube. Usually I go through a like a stream elements or something like that, like an OBS studio, but I want to test this out tonight. All right. The next part it says is the chest. All right. Since the legs are going to dry, we can work on a chest. Now we have two sets of chests. We've got one with this little armor here and we've got this bare 
chest one. So you really see his six pack. This one is more hidden, a little bit more details on here. Uh, this is the uh, Age of Sigmar. This is the Warhammer 40K one. And uh, but the head will fit on there no matter which one you choose. And the back is the same no matter which one we choose. This is the back of this guy. So I'm more partial to this because it's the uh, Age of Sigmar one. This is the 40K one. Um, there's a little bit more armor on this guy. So it'd be a little bit more. You know what? I think, though, I, I don't know if I mind the armor. What do you get? What do you guys think? Armor looks cool. OK, armor it is. All right. All right. So we're just going to dry fit that. Perfect. Grab my wonderful glue, which I won't stick to myself again. So it's okay. Not bad. And this stuff, like like I said, it's so cool. Like you just put it on, slap this bad boy together. Look at that. Nice little fit. You just press it a bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of air on there. This way it makes it... Uh, dry a little quicker all right and then let's see what are the next steps here i think that's the first steps and it actually says to attach the legs to the body so okay let us do that so it looks like now which one's right which one's left this must go somehow on there because this must be the inside right that i don't think that's the outside that would look too weird pretty sure this is the inside of that how in the world does that go on there oh wait a minute i see something does it go against it maybe it goes oh we go i can't tell which way it goes this thing Let's take a look at the other leg. Maybe the other leg will help. It'll be easier. Let's go this way. This is the front, right? Yep. Oh, there's like a little slit here. Oh, there we go. Like that. Okay. Like so. So we're going to put the glue on the leg itself. Dab a bit of it. I, you know, just a dollop. <laughs> and stick it right in there. As you can see, like the body is already pretty much holding together. The foot's holding together already as well. Um, the leg is going not to hold on, it looks like, for some reason. Yeah, I avoided you guys watching me clip all this stuff and cut it all up. <laughs> uh, don't forget, you can also be a super chatter if you want. You can hit down below and support. Uh, you can you can go from a dollar to whatever you want. Uh, and maybe later on what I'll do is uh, when I choose a color or like the underpainting, or whatever like that, maybe I'll say for a dollar, you get to choose the underpainting, you know, what's the base coat gonna be. A little bit of air on there. Oops, I think I blew away something there. All right, that seems to be getting a little bit sturdier. Now we gotta just figure out this one again now. I'm assuming it goes, this doesn't go like that. My God, that, that would be like horrible. Oh, there we go, I think. Yep, there we go, now we got it. Ah, that's how it goes. Okay, so this time we're going to actually put the glue inside here. And a little bit more on the other leg. And that'll also, like, cement the other leg in a little bit more as well. So you can see here. I'm going to try. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Get. We're going to have a little butt crack effect going on right now. <laughs> a dollop of daisy yeah i don't know why okay so this usually this is a lot better and sticks a lot faster i don't know what's going on here with this but usually it sticks a lot better than that okay a little bit of air on his butt all right so we're going to let that dry a bit because I think we can move on to the next part. Or let's see what he's going to look like standing up. Oh, that's going to look cool. It's going to look awesome. Yep. All right. So next, it looks like we're going to be choosing the arms and a head. So we have three choices of heads. Where's the heads? Where are my heads? Where? Are they? Oh, they're there in the back here. We've got three choices of heads. we got this weird looking 
This one I find looks like um I don't know. I think this one looks like the Balrog, or this one looks like the Balrog. I find a bit. <laughs> this one just looks like a weird devil mixed with Baraka from Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you can see that or not. There you go. And then we got that funky looking head. And then we've got that funky looking head. There you go. So this is drying out pretty well here. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, that down a bit. Okay. Um, I am partial to this one, to be honest. Middle one looks cool with horns to the side. Oh, okay. So this one here. And it's just going to stick right on like that. So that's going to be kind of cool. Okay, yeah, you know what? I like that. I like that. Good one, Rusty. Thank you. Welcome, everybody else. If you're new, uh, I hope you're enjoying the live stream. I know it's not super a lot yet. We're going to be painting as soon as we get this guy all glued up and ready to go. Uh, what's cool is that this glue glues really quickly or dries quickly and bonds quickly to the plastic. And we should be able to get the primer on, the base coat on, maybe some shading beforehand, and then get started painting. Now, if I'm not able to finish tonight, my goal is to finish it off off camera and have it for members only. So the ones that become, I believe it's tier three, which is a highlight level. You'll be able to see the final, final product. Although on TikTok, I'll have uh, an image uh, going on of him and my Instagram as well. So you can take a look at that. That's drying pretty well. I'm going to just spray a little bit of air on that. Make sure his head sticks on properly. There we go. Now, what's cool is when we airbrush later, it's actually going to put some air on there as well. That's looking pretty decent. What do you think? That's looking pretty cool. So, again, this is the Demon Prince from the old Games Workshop lineup or workshop. Um, this is from their Age of Sigmar line. It's not the new one that just came out or will be coming out, I think. And um, so we're building this old one. All right. Now we got to figure out. His left arm and his right arm. So we got to figure out what kind of arms is good. He's got like, he's got this big badass sword, a big, really cool axe here. This seems to be the left arm. This seems to be a left arm. There's this really cool arm here. Well, that's, oh, that one's, yeah, that one looks cool to you. I'm going to have to do some sort of effects in there. That's going to have to be something in there special. Uh, oh, this looks like it's an arm you build, actually. With something else. Oh, okay. So, like, okay, this is a right arm. This is a left arm, but like very wonky, weird. What in the world is that thing? And then, oh, this must go. Does this go with this? Or not at all? <laughs> Maybe it goes with, oh, it goes with this one, probably. This probably goes. With yeah, that goes together like that. So we got a different kind of arm here. This looks like it's the right arm, so it could be like holding up. That looks like yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. It works perfectly in there. That looks pretty neat. It doesn't seem to be standing up very well now. Kind of, kind of getting top heavy there. I think his head's gonna make him fall over soon. <laughs> I may have to stick him right to the base already, just so that maybe his leg isn't on properly. No, it's his head. His head's making him top heavy. All right, we're going to have to lie him down. <laughs> Sword. And axe both look cool. Yeah, I know, but there's like different swords, different, like there's a, the axe is awesome. But then there's these cool. So I'm trying to figure this one here looks like it's the Age of Sigmar one. And maybe these two are Age of Sigmar and this one. Okay, so their options actually for the Age of Sigmar version is these two. This is the two for the Age of Sigmar. This looks like it's for the 40K. So, hmm. I mean, the axe. We got to go with an axe, right? What do you think? Yeah. Oh, but look at this detail on this sword. Look how nice that would be. We can make this like a glowing sword or something, like a hellfire sword. I don't know, with all these like markings. But then this one looks cool too. Oh, no. I'm torn, guys. All right. Um, 
What do you guys say in the chat? Which one? Or else I'm picking myself. I'm going to go in three, two, one. All right. Going with the sword, it looks like. There we go. Sold on the sword. Rest, I should have made you pay for that one. I'm kidding. All right. Let's get some glue on that. We want to hurry up and get this guy glued up here so we can start priming him and basing him and all that stuff. All right. You're going to be here for seeing me build a miniature, not even paint a miniature. Oh, boy. Now we got to figure out. Oh, how does this? I should have dry fitted this before because now I put glue on and can't figure out for the life of me how. Oh, does it go? Oh, like that? Oh, there we go. Goes like that. Goes above his head. Ooh, this is looking awesome. Hey. I don't know why this glue's not sticking here tonight properly, folks. Usually this stuff is so fast acting. Maybe it's the type of plastic this is. Because on my other guys that I usually you know, put a little bit of air on there too. Okay. Yeah, I know it looks like swamp water in there, but of course that's what happens when you airbrush. Let's see if that makes them a little less top heavy now. No, that makes them even more top heavy. You know, if we put the base on them, I hope the base is I'm gonna put it probably a little bit further back. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I should glue them to the base now. I think I will. Usually some people usually base their stuff first. Um, but I don't like using pins and all that weird stuff. Uh, some people do that. They put like pins and all that and hope for the best. I'm just going to stick some lots of that glue on there. And I think I'm going to put them right about there. Because if I want to have them sit on there properly. And not fall over all the time. See, already starting to stick pretty good. That's looking pretty cool. All right. All right. What's next? Oh, the right arm or left arm. That was the right arm. I'm looking at him and I'm saying the left arm since a while ago, but that ain't no left arm. All right. We can get rid of this chest. Since we're done with that, we have his tail over there. All right. So do I put, we have this arm here. Oh, that looks like a pretty, although this is, oh, no, this is a left arm. So our right arm, sorry. So this one is a note for sure because we already glued that on. We have this as a left arm. Yeah, the arms connected my balance. Metal. Also, when we put those big wings, I mean, these things are huge. This is going to hold them up some more there. But this, him being on the stand right off the bat, that is going to help a lot. So, all right. So we have this for his left arm. We have this. If we build it, they will come. <laughs> and then we had this, this, to be honest. Oh, that's actually, what in the world is that? That, I don't, you know what? I'm going to put that aside. I don't think that's an arm. But to be honest, I like this one, but this one goes more with his other arm. It's got like, I think this is overkill. Let's try it. And he's got that pipe that goes like he's got that he's got down there. Like, is that, or, oh, look at that big mold line. Oof. And I'm not going to be putting green stuff on that. I'm not going to be filling the gaps in tonight because that's going to take a little bit more time to dry. But, ouch. If I really press it together, that looks kind of neat. We'll have to glue that together. Or, if I go cheaply. Now, which way does this go? Oh, this one goes like this. Now, there's a lot less of a crack on that, at least. But there is a big gap. On the shoulder and behind there. That's pretty bad. No, that's too bad. I think just for the sake of it, I'm going to go with the simpler one. It's got the same symbols as his other arm here. So it kind of matches. I think I'm going to go with that. And I dropped the piece on the floor. Oh, well. You know, I'm going to stir up my glue a bit here. Maybe that's what. Maybe it's not. I'm going to shake it up maybe. Maybe there's like. I don't know, but this stuff lasts forever. I, I've been through like oh, I don't know how many models I've been through with Conquest, uh, gluing a whole bunch up, at least a hundred maybe, and it's still full. All right, you snap right on there. Well, this is not a snap fit, but I wonder if it really has to glide. Maybe it's got to go. Maybe I'm putting it the wrong way here. 
Does it look? But it looks like it fits that way. Just not snapping in, like not sticking in there very well. Oh, now it is. Now it's sticking. It be sticking. Hey again, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. This is the uh, very first time I pretty much do a live stream like this. Uh, hope you're enjoying. So if you've never built a miniature before, I have to tell you, it's very serene. Okay? It's very relaxing. I actually enjoy building them a little bit more than actually painting them because of the fact that you can sometimes change them like this here. Like you can modify what they look like. I kind of like how that turns out. All right. Uh, the next part they're suggesting to do is. Okay, we got his loincloth. We've got wings and we've got something else. We got a tail and we got some armor pauldrons and stuff like that. So there's like these ones here. Oh, and it actually has a left and right. I think I don't know. Wait, oh, where is it? This one has an R which is for right, I'm assuming. Oh, and there's a left. Look at that. Huh. And these are the ones that go on. Um, these are the big ones here. This I don't know what this is. This looks like a... Oh, that must be for the other version. It looks like that. All right. So they're asking now... Where are they? For the loincloth. Now. And we can choose. This is what's fun. Which one do we go for? Chainmail or just wrappings? Who knows? Chainmail wrappings. Uh, I like this one, to be honest. So we're going to dry fit it first. Everything else seems to be sticking pretty well so far. Looking good. You go on like, I mean, ah, this is why the base shouldn't have went on right away. I'm going to have fun gluing this on. Oh, I think that goes underneath the cod piece here. Ah, it goes like that. Okay. Oh, well, it actually kind of gives them some stability because it hits the ground too a bit. All right. So let's get some glue. I'm sorry if I'm putting glue on your crotch, buddy. Sorry about this. All right. All right. I do what I just did. Shove that right there. And that is that. One clot. Put on. Uh, we could put the tail. Going to butt crack here. Uh, this goes, let's see, is it go, whoop, whoop, I'm going to drop them here. Does this go like that, or does it go downwards? I think it goes downwards. Yeah, it's supposed to go downwards. So it goes like that. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that looks good. All right. Glue the butt crack. Wasn't there a movie or something that that happened? Or is it a joke? I don't remember, but something about super gluing the butt crack or something like that. All right. And if you guys want to ask me questions about the hobby and the chat, I'm trying to look at the chat as much as I can here. Uh... <laughs> oh, sorry. He wanted a chain mail. Well, I went with the cloth one. And you can say hello to the troll. Long story short. Okay, again, look at that big crack back there. I mean, there is a way that if you wanted to, you could put just like some a little bit of super glue around it. And once that dries, it will make like a bit of a film. So when it paints, it won't show as much, but it will be there. So that kind of sucks for that. Now, the only problem is that I don't really want to, but I have to. I don't want to. I mean, the wings I have to put on, but it's going to make it so much harder to paint uh, as well. But I don't have much of a choice to put the wings on because then I could paint the wings separately. But then gluing onto um, paint is really difficult, actually. That's not sitting in there properly. There we go. Yeah, so when you want to try and glue into paint or whatever, because like, I'm going to get paint in there for sure, uh, it makes it a lot harder to um, glue them after. You have to pretty much use a special super glue, I think, or something. Maybe this will work. I don't know, but um, I'm American Pie. <laughs> oh, no, 
No. Well, well, no, no. There was something else that happened in there with the super glue. But uh, this seems to be all sticking really well. I'm just checking it quickly here. This seems to be sticking really well. His foot stuck down. Arms are sticking on pretty good. So that's good. All right. We're going to put the, before we put the wings on, we're going to put the, these little pauldrons on, which are going to go right on his leg, directly on the leg right here. Uh, so that's perfect. That's awesome. It's going to cover up a little bit of that. And that is the left leg. So I'm right this time. Or eh, I'm right about being left. Just put a lot of glue on there. You don't have to necessarily put that much. It just makes it that it spreads it a little bit more. And then it makes it uh, get the contact and become like a cement with a little bit more as well. So, I mean, if you guys ever did the uh, car hobbies, like um, not car hobbies, but uh, model cars, it's very similar, except this is a lot cooler. I don't know. I mean, I used to do car. I used to do model cars when I was younger. So did my dad. Big, big time. He used to have a whole collection until I broke them all when I was a kid and found them. <laughs> was not happy about that. Let's just say. A little bit of air on there to just get this glue really stuck on there. Hope the angle is good for you guys. Hopefully you're seeing everything and I'm not blocking too much here. All right. So I really don't know what this piece was for. Oh, this might have... Was this another tail? No, I don't think so. I think this was another arm for the other guy. And then, I mean, this would have been cool. I mean, should I put them on them anyways? Just to make them... Like, I could hide. <gasps> Ooh. I think I'm going to put those on just to hide those cracks. Yes, sir. Not supposed to put these on. But frankly, I don't care. This is my miniature and I want to. <laughs> Angle's great. All right, perfect. Good. Like I said, I'm pretty much new to streaming directly on YouTube. Uh, if this setup goes well, I'd like to do this a little bit more often. Uh, sometimes it'll be members only or members only chat. Uh, don't forget, you can join my channel now, which is awesome. Wait, did I put that the right way? I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or is it supposed to be this way? I might have put that. Frankly, I like it more this way. Because one, it covers up a lot more. And it looks a lot cooler. It's a little overkill, isn't it? Is that too much? Not too much? No. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got the armor here, so it's going to kind of match with it. I mean, I'm mixing up uh, 40K and Age of Sigmar here. But let's just check and see if the other one's going to look too stupid going on top of his arm right here. Because if it is, oh, maybe I could put, like, this instead. I think that's supposed to go somewhere. I think it was supposed to go somewhere else, that. But what if I... No, that looks dumb. What about this here? Does this, look, does this look stupid? Oh, my God, that looks... I think it's supposed to go this way. Yeah, you know what? Not going to put that side. Forget it. I like the one armor on this side, like it on his arm. It's pretty cool. Acts almost like a shield kind of thing compared to his sword arm. I think that looks awesome. Yeah. See? Looks sick. Exactly. Sick is the word I was going for. <laughs> All right, just gonna take a little sip of water here. So most of you might not know, I got into this hobby only about three years ago, um, right, and uh, started painting with uh, Zombie Side Invader, and uh, loved it. Uh, I, I sucked at first; I was horrible painting, but. Yeah, I do usually put the entire mini together before I paint them. Um, I can just show you examples here. I have another miniature here. So like like something like from Simon Games, like this is a, from a board game. They're already assembled. So those, I just primed them. And this guy's primed in white, as you can see. Uh, he's coming up eventually on the channel. But these ones from Games Workshop, from Parabellum, uh, they often come unbuilt and you get to choose what you're building. So... You know, that's always a cool idea. And I find that awesome that you can do that. So the next thing we're doing, it looks like here, some sort of a headrest piece that's going to go somewhere. And I'm trying to figure out where, or did I screw that up? And it's supposed to be on something else. Because I don't see where this fits into anything. It's showing like here. Like, 
Is it his wing? Oh, in, is it instead of the wings? You put these instead of the no. You can't put those instead of the wings. That can't be right. Oh my god, you can put those instead of the wings. <laughs> what? Put these little dinky things instead of the wings? So this would go which way? This would go. This has to go on the outside, right? So this would go here. Let's just take a look at it. Let's dry fit it first. Yeah. So it looks like you put this here instead. And then this is the other side. So it goes right. It's supposed to fit right inside. Unless I'm not putting it in properly. I don't, it goes that way. I don't know which way they're supposed to go. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 do I want, oh, I don't know. Do I want like these big ass wings? Like, let's put a wing on it just on one side here. Oh, the sword is actually interfering with the wing now. Oh, no. Did I screw that up? Oh, no, there he goes. But look at that big honking crack again. Oh, it's not so bad. Well, it's all right. Here we go. It looks kind of cool. Well, yeah, what does though? All right. Does somebody want to put one dollar as a super chat and make the decision for me? Okay, now we're gonna go with wings, which are gonna go kind of like that. Okay, or we're gonna go with these funky little kind of weird. Whoops, I'm really having a hard time holding these things tonight. Or we're going to be putting these weird, I think that one goes, oh my God, seriously, my hands. And this one should fit. So this one fit in here like that, and that one fit in there. Or we go with these weird looking things. What do you think? Come on, $1. You just hit down below in the chat. You can uh, add a dollar. What do you think? Or else I'm just going to pick, oh, I'm really torn because, I mean, wings are cool and all. But, like, this is awesome. Like, look at that thing. Like, oh, just dry fitting it looks awesome. Okay, this, I mean, I don't know. This, I think I'm more torn or more prone towards these things. I mean, it's not your typical demon with the wings. Oh, I like that. You know what? No one wants to give me a dollar. Not even a dollar. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to move off the wings. Oh, my God. We're taking demon wings off of there. And we're going to be putting on these funky little... Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I know. It's wrong, but I don't care. Glued on. If I don't like it later, I can take a blowtorch to it. Did I just put that the wrong way? So I go like that. That goes in this one, doesn't it? No, it goes in this one. Right? Oh, did I screw this up again? Where does this one go? Here. That doesn't seem right. Although it does seem right now. <laughs> I'm putting in the wrong one now. I had dry fit it and it was perfect. Okay, there we go. No. Ah, there we go. <laughs> wow. Rob, these things having fun tonight. Can't get it in the right. Never mind. Not going to go there. And voila. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to close up my glue because we don't... Well, actually, supposedly this part goes on somewhere. I don't know where. It's supposed to, there's a part here that says it's supposed to go on the base directly. But, I mean, kind of weird. Kind of cool. Let me just uh, get some air on those wings there, or those... Not wings anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said a moment. Yep. Yep. Caught myself. Yeah, so it says to just place this down on there. You know what? I think I'll leave this off until I actually do the basing. And I don't know if I'm going to get to the basing tonight, which would be cool, but I don't think I will. See, it just says to plop this on on the ground like that and glue that on because I want to be able to get to all these areas. So we're going to keep that aside 
I'm not going to glue that on. As you can see, he is really well uh, fixed. He's all good. Get rid of all these extra pieces here. All right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes wrong is good. You never know, right? I think I did a good choice. Uh, thank you for some of your choices out there as well. I love my armor pauldrons here. I love this big thing on the shoulder. Uh, I love the fact I didn't go with the wings. Uh, like the Terso. This is going to make it a really interesting miniature to paint. So we're going to let that dry for now. I'm just going to move this uh, wet palette away because I'm going to be bringing my airbrush paints out. And we're going to be priming this. Now, here's, here's the question now. I have a couple choices or a few choices here, all right, of primers. Some people out there are probably like, oh, my God, you're priming it before it's completely dry. It is pretty much dry, folks. Come on. It's, it's not going to be more than that. So here we go. Whole bunch of Army Painter War Paints Air. I got matte black, and it is very matte, by the way. Matte gray or matte white. Now, if you guys are seeing that blood splatter effect on it, yes. I was having fun with my zombies yesterday, and I was trying to do a blood splatter, and it actually splattered all over the place. And not just on these, but on my wall as well. Yeah, so it's a good thing I have a hobby. So if we want to start with a dark undertone, like really dark, I'd go with this. A little bit cooler or very bright. All right, so this is going to be the debate now because, and after that, we can do a base coat of another color. We could go like a deep red if we wanted to. Uh, we could go the color of the skin, whatever we want to do, all of the skin maybe. Uh, we could do like that. And that's going to be all airbrushed. And then we're going to do a little bit of uh, shading. And then we're going to move on to some of the paints and all that stuff and the highlights and the metallics. And we're going to, yeah, so first we got to start with basing. Still, or gray? You think gray? All right. Well, the thing is, he's already gray, though. So, but I mean, it's just a primer, right? So that's fine. We'll try it. Anyway, oh, I'm dropping everything here. There goes my hands again. All right, we're going to just shake this up. Okay, what I'm going to do also, I'm going to turn on my shaker here. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> not sure if you guys heard that or not. Now... We're going to shake up the paint a lot. So we want all those pigments shook up. <laughs> yeah, you heard that? Yeah, that's my uh, nail lacquer shaker, which I put my paints in to shake that up. I noticed my mic went up quite a bit whenever that showed up. So uh, I might have to move that out of the way when I start shaking up other paints. Or I'll just shake them by hand tonight. I mean, whatever. If it's really loud, just let me know. All right. We got that all shook up. As you can see, there's not many pigments. I'm going to just shake it some more here. That looks bad, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, thanks for the like on the video. And, uh, yeah, so here we go. All right. We're going to actually, I'm going to put my glove on just because I don't want to get paint all over my hand. Now, I will have to turn on the vent on the uh, spray booth. Hopefully, you won't hear that. Not sure if you will or not. All right. I'm gonna be, first of all, we'll just get the paint in the airbrush. So if you haven't used an airbrush before, this is a dual action where this is just the air. And when you pull back, it actually shoots out the paint. And I've got it only a little bit coming out at a time. So you can see there, it's not very, if you want details or you want to prime, it's a little bit further. And inside you got the needle, which is a 0.3 millimeter, the 0.3 millimeter cap as well. And that seems to have been loose for some reason. There we go. Uh, this here will adjust uh, how much paint comes out here in the back. So let's just uh, shake that up a bit more. Open this up. All right. We're probably going to need quite a bit. Now, the only annoying part with an airbrush is you got to pretty much clean it every time between paints. So there's only that that's the issue I find. It could be a little longer, uh, but it saves you time when it comes to prime. Okay, a spray can is even faster, but a spray can, the problem is that you're going to get globiness on it. So hopefully this is pretty much well dry. I'm going to see if my paint comes out, guys. You always... There you go. See? Comes out really nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to just start off at the top here. Actually, i got to turn on my fan. 
I don't think you guys actually hear that. That's pretty cool. If you do, let me know. <laughs> oh. Getting a bit of a splatter effect there. I don't know why. Usually I don't get that, but I didn't clean it well enough a while ago. You see, it goes on really well. And you can see the difference in the gray. I mean, that's pretty obvious. The gray that it was before. And the gray that it is now. we got to get that sword. These little areas here are a little bit harder to get to. Gotta get those spears. And like I was saying about a spray can is that the difference is you're gonna get a little bit more globiness and you're gonna lose a little bit more of your effects, right? Let's take a look. I'm good in there. Yeah, I'm pretty good in there. Super good in there, actually. So you guys tonight are gonna learn about airbrushing too. If you haven't airbrushed before, you're gonna learn about cleaning it, maintaining it. So you can still see a bit of that crack, but at least it's a lot less bad. And technically, again, now I'm regretting having put the base on because I could have really got underneath to paint all the undercarriage. <laughs> if they had this when I was doing my model cars and painting my model cars, that would have saved me so much trouble. It might look like I'm going over the same spots again and again, but it's because I'm noticing that there's still some dark plastic. And sometimes you can just go over, see with the airbrush after, and it just like pushes a little bit more. Just want to make sure I get all that arm here. I think I got it all. A little more here. Oh. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that awesome. What a difference. Like right off the bat, just doing that, we'll. Uh... Okay, the fan is really low. Okay, perfect then. Hopefully, you can still hear me clearly though. I'm going to turn it off for now while I clean this. So, so you can see I, I put quite a bit in there and there's still lots left. Um, but this is the fun part is cleaning this thing. <laughs> Actually, well, fun. I mean, so what you got to do is you need a little bit of water and you're going to wish it around a bit, swoosh it around and you put your finger and you're going to blow it like as if you're painting and it makes bubbles, which, uh, every grown up likes to do once in a while is blow bubbles in their chocolate milk. Right. And you just constantly put some water in there just to. Really get it clean. I mean, I don't do a great, great job because I'm going to be using it again for the base coat. And I'm going to grab a paper towel here. This is my bloodied paper towel that I dropped some blood of the blood god on it today. Just going to shove my paper towel in there. Get as much as I can. Clean up that. There's some that is going to be see a little bit in the nozzle there. Uh, that we can just put a little bit of water. I'm just going to dip it in some water here off camera. That sometimes is a trick as well. So, okay. All right. That's a little bit better. Still has a bit of uh, gray in there. So what you do is you just add a little bit more water, shove it in this little cleaning pot here and do that. So you're shoving all the air and extra water and all that stuff away just to uh, try and get the most out of it. I'm going to use a little Q-tip here just to dab the end here because there's still a little bit of gray in there. But we'll clean this out really well after the stream or 
we'll see because I might have to clean out beforehand <laughs> or else it's going to get dry paint in there. All right. And then that's going to be an issue. Sorry about that. I hit the camera. Let's just refocus on this guy here. We get to focus back on him. There we go. Is it coming up? Hey, come on, focus. Camera. Okay. Now, what we're going to want to do is um, figure out the base coat. So, as you can see the artwork, let's go get the artwork on the box again here. So, here's what he looks like. All right. This is what he's supposed to look like. And I mean, if I go that light, I'd have to go with a very, very light tone of color as a base coat. So let's figure that out here. Let's see. What do I got? I've got a skeleton bone. That could possibly come in handy. Um, I've also got, if we really wanted to, I've got this triad of colors of whites okay so you start with the base of shark white you go to yeti white and then you go matte white very slowly but i think that might be a little too much for tonight i'm not sure if that would even be nice it might even be shark white do a shading get a little bit of yeti white on those muscles like very and then right at the tip the the, the white so that could be an option uh <laughs> I don't have much air paint right now. That's pretty much all I have. I think I have, do I have a, a skin color, other skin color? No, I don't. We could also go with a gray base coat, but then it's like gray on gray, which is not bad, but a little weird. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have <laughs> for uh, air paints. I don't have many, I have a lot of like the all the other colors, like red, blues, and greens and stuff like that, but when it comes to skin tones, I pretty much have that. So, um, you know what? I might try the shark with the shark white almost looks like the gray there, but this is going to have, this is going to go on everything, by the way, it's no longer a primer. It's going to be a base coat. So if we do that, I mean, the shark white will be the base coat of everything, but do I want to go with like a really cool, maybe like a red, what do you guys think? Bluish gray for the skin. Okay. Bluish gray. Oh, bluish gray. So how would we do that? A bluish gray. Well, I do have to put a base coat on. Or I don't know if I, I don't think I can shade it right off the bat. I need something. Uh, see, this is what goes into miniature painting. Is that you're gonna have you're gonna have to come up with an idea of your base coat. So we really need to get the skin. Um, well, you know, you said bluish gray, right? What if we went uniform gray and then put some sort of blue shade on it all? What if we did that? You think that would come out cool? Or what if I put a little bit of blue in the uniform gray? What if I did that? Or yeah. Hmm, that might be an idea. The thing is, you have to do the whole mini with this, right? You're doing a base coat. So do I do gray as a base coat? And then I'm going to put a shade on. I can put a shade of blue on all the skin. You know what? Blue in the gray? You think? I don't know. And then blues, I got a lot of blues. So I'm shaking up my gray right now. Uh, if we're saying we're going to be mixing the blue and the gray, you want like a light blue in there? I could mix in some speed paint blue. Uh, I've got actually, ooh, maybe this would work. Where is it? I have what is called a runic blue. If I can find it, here it is. Runic gray, sorry. Look at this. What if, what if we do this? What if, as a base coat, I'm going to shake those both up. What if we did that? Would that be crazy? A air paint with a speed paint? I don't know. I've never tried it. You know what? <laughs> There's always room 
to try anything. Oh, this one still needs to be shook a bit more. Um, I think we're good. I've never tried this one, I don't think, before. So let's put maybe what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight drops. I'm going to need more than that. Nine, ten. Should we do a two to one ratio? A two to one ratio? So loco. <laughs> what music? Oh, uh, runic. <laughs> I was like, there's music playing? I didn't put no music on. All right. All right, runic gray. I'm going to mix that in. Here we go. Look, I mean, it looks a little bit darkish. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do just three. Uh, one, two, two might be even enough. Oh, well, a third drop has fallen. And three. All right. I don't know why that's so goopy. Normally, it's not that goopy. Now, we're going to mix it in here. Watch this go. All right. We're actually going to take a brush and mix that because that did not brush. That did not mix at all. Where is my mixing brush? Uh, oh, well. I'm going to have to use. Here it is. All right. I'm going to mix that in. I really don't think that's going to be enough because when I just mixed it, it just like pretty much globbed it everywhere. So we'll see. This almost looks like the exact same gray as the primer. So I don't even know if this is going to give anything. Let's see what it gives. It's identical. Isn't that weird? And it has blue in there. Well, let's see if it'll show. Let's start on the leg here. Oh, yeah, it's showing. Okay. His muscles, face. Ooh, I think I like the mixture. It's not super, like, well, I forgot to turn on my fan here. No wonder I was like, I'm getting vapors in my face here. Sorry. Add more blue? Yeah, maybe you're right. A little bit more blue in there. Joys of making a recipe, yeah? A little bit more blue. And I think I actually have to add a little bit more gray because that's not going to be enough. And maybe a little bit more blue again. Here, let's try that out. Let's just put the caps back on here. All right, let's see. Let me mix that up a bit. Oh, yeah, I think that's a little bit more blue that we want. And it's looking more like it. That's looking nice. I think that's going to do good. Let's try that. Well, there's a little bit more blue. Let's see on the miniature. See if that looks better. No, I think more blue again. Oh, sorry about the focusing. I don't know why it keeps doing that. We're adding a little bit more runic gray. Sorry, it's, I know it's blue, it says gray, runic gray, but it is bluish. So, I'm just going to mix it up a bit more here. So, it should have been maybe 10 drops of the, the runic gray and 5 drops of the uniform gray. Maybe that's what the problem is. My mixture. I should have went for the darker color first and then. Oh. 
Now I do have to make sure I'm covering the entire miniature again because this is your base coat. Now, because this is speed paint and there is the possibility of getting reactivation, which maybe some of you don't know what that is, uh, it means because the speed paints are a uh, water-based paint that whenever you apply another paint on top of it, if it's not completely, completely dry, you're going to reactivate the paint underneath and it could come through. So it is changing it a bit blue. Oh, I think I ran out. Yes, I did. All right. Do one, two, three, four, five, six of the greatest time. We're going to put more of the runic gray instead. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Said I'm new to testing this stuff, so why not, right? What's the worst that can happen? If I mess it up and I gotta reprime it, not a big deal. But I'm almost done covering the miniature there, so it should be good. And you were saying like a bluish gray, but you'll see we'll put on a, a blue wash after uh, that's going to uh, maybe make it really pop. So it looks like I'm going over the entire miniature again, and that's what it is. That's the point of a base coat. Especially, like, if I'm doing all the skin in one color, it just saves me a lot of time. Okay. I think I've gotten everything. All right. I think that's pretty cool. I it went out of focus again. So that's with the bluish gray mixture we made there. Come on, get back into focus. There we go. All right. Uh, this is going to take me a little bit longer to clean this. Uh, bear with me, please. Should be pretty quick anyways. I'm just going to... Put some water in there. Any, anyway, you guys can ask me some questions if you want. And we're going to move on to shading that skin. We're making some bubbles, folks. Making the bubbles. So this, like I said, this is the point with an airbrush that I don't like. Is you got to clean it and like quick enough. Um, yeah, got to get an assistant. All right. Well, you guys got to become members and get me more money here for the channel. And I'll get myself an assistant because, uh, I think live painting with an airbrush is not a great idea <laughs> and I can get myself an assistant and they can clean this up for me. Uh, yeah, but you know what? It's looking pretty good actually already. So as you can see inside, there's not much left, uh, a little bit of water again and a little spraying into my little garbage pail i call it here the water pail the water garbage pail yeah i'm waiting a long time for it because i really wanted to get almost all that water out of there uh, there's not much left in there there we go 
I should be able to grab a tube, uh, toothpick, a uh, Q-tip, and just dab inside. Oh, come on. And what I'm going to do is actually going to put just a bit of cleaner in there and uh, let it sit. Like, I'll put it through the brush, but I'll let it sit in there a little bit, and that should uh, help clean it up a little bit easier after as well. There's a little bit of water left in there. I know, it's a little bit longer. There we go. That looks pretty good. So as you can see, this is what the needle looks like on the inside. I took off the uh, cap there uh, just so I can clean it a bit better. So you just take yourself a Q-tip, get inside, turn it around, and there you go. See, you see all the paint coming off there? So that's what happens inside the gun if you don't clean it properly either. So you got to be careful with that. Here it's not so bad because this is not the part, but this is where it sprays out from. And this is where you can get some issues with clogging and stuff like that. So you got to be careful. All right. I'm just going to put this back on, put a little bit of wash in, a little bit cleaner, and we'll be good to go with the shade. Anyways, it's going to need time to dry anyways. So that is fine. A little bit of airbrush cleaner now. What do you guys think so far? What you, this miniature looks awesome, doesn't it? Already, just just like that, the miniature looks really cool already. I find, to be honest. And so we're just gonna leave that sitting there for a little bit. That should clean it out. And just a little bit of. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Nice and clean. Okay. I'll take off my glove. I'm gonna let this sit in there. Nope, somehow that just got stuck on there. <laughs> okay, the shading. So you said a, okay, I have an idea. We could, if you wanna do that, I have certain colors. Okay, so I have this Briar Queen Chill, which would give it a cooler effect. I have Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a shade. This is a contrast paint. So it's gonna, if it was on white, it would look like that. I have not tried it like on this gray. Or we go, yeah, I think it'll be either the Drakenhof. I think that briar will be, it's gonna be a little weird on that, I think. So we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use a shade. There's a shade. Okay. At least the building of the guy's done. All right, moving on to a shade. I need a good brush to shade. Where is my good brushing? Oh, here's one. Okay, since we're gonna be putting pretty much a shade everywhere on this miniature, uh, this doesn't need to be shook up too much, just a little bit. Looks sick, all right, good. So here we go. Now, if you don't like it, well, we can fix it. So this is armor. We got skin on here, right? Now, is he wearing a helmet or is that hair? No, that's, yeah, he does. Looks like he does have a helmet on there. I think, yeah, he does. Uh, I'm going to bring it closer to the camera. What do you guys think? Does he have a helmet on there? Oh, get in focus. Get in focus. No, you don't want to be in focus. You want me in focus over here instead? I think that's a helmet, but I may be wrong. Okay, anyways, we're going to start with the skin that we can find skin. And so under here, see, how about that? Is that too dark? Or does that look like what we want? What well, the thing is, we're gonna do a dry brush on top of the skin after of another gray, like a, of a lighter gray, just to give it back that gray effect. So it's not a big deal if it's really dark right now. So we can put it on everywhere that's supposed to be skin. Now, this is totally not following the artwork, which is cool. Sometimes I like doing that. And you can see the shade just like pools right into the recesses. I mean, I know I'm doing the, the, the nails and all that too. And there's like, I don't know if you, can, you guys can see underneath what I'm doing here. Like I said, maybe I shouldn't have put the base on. But that's getting in all the muscles. It's going to make them look really cool. Uh, yeah, that's part of his muscles here. It doesn't matter if we get some of the other parts. 
we're going to be going over that with other colors after anyways. So it's not a big deal, really. We just want to shade on the skin for now. We can even do all these symbols that are etched into his skin. Uh, you know, it looks like almost like raised skin tattoos, or what do you call those? Like a not a tattoo, but like a almost like a oh, what would you call that? Well, I don't know if it's actually part of the armor, or if it's actually part of his skin. There's a tube there, so we have to be careful. It doesn't matter if we get that a bit though. We gotta get that wonderful six pack, right? And he's just showing that off. We got to get really in the crevices of that six pack just to really get it to be dark. So we're going to just really pull that in there. There we go. Now we're going to go into the legs here. I said, if we get some on the other spots, not really a big deal because we will be painting over those areas with other colors. And then we're going to be shading those as well. This is just to shade the skin, really get the skin tone down. Okay, runes embedded in his skin, maybe. But I'm thinking, you know, uh, like Nightcrawler, okay, like from X Men. You know, remember they they asked him, "Is those are those scars?" And I think he said something like, uh, "Yeah, they were self inflicted wounds that just ended up becoming like bigger scars, kind of thing, and then just protruding from the skin." So I think this is pretty cool. I don't know. Now, when we're going to do the sword, or if I don't know if I'm going to have time tonight, probably not, but uh, when it comes to the sword, I'm probably going to put a glow effect, which I'm going to use with the air paint, and it's going to shine off of them, like make a, an object source lighting uh, that's going to shine off of the sword onto him. So I'll be able to dab whatever color in it. There might be a blue, maybe, flame, or maybe it'll be orangey. I'm not sure yet. got to get all these little nooks. Oh, i got to do his tail anyway, so it doesn't matter if I hit his tail. Right, you see, you just blab this on. On flatter surfaces, shades don't do much. It pretty much just shades your color, like it says. It's a shade. Um, uh, now, I don't think that's skin, but we're going to have to come up with the arm anyway. Oh, we didn't do the S arm here. Now, that's armor. Or is that skin as well? That, no, that's armor. That is armor. We got his hand to do here. Oh, the rest of his arm here. Okay. There we go. Uh, oh, there's a little bit of skin protruding from the shoulder pad, but it doesn't matter because I think this is all skin here. All the way up to his back here. Oh, yeah. So you can see the armor plating a bit there. Now, I'm just going to assume that is not, or that is like some armor, but I'm going to go onto his face with this blue as well. I think that's going to be kind of neat. And you can see, look at all the details, what it does there. Like that is amazing. Now, I'm not going to do his horns because I'm going to do that a different color. Did I get everywhere with the skin? Oh, uh, trying to see. Oh, I missed a little part here. That's the tube. That's his face. This is pretty gnarly looking, wouldn't you say? I right, have to let this dry. That's the only problem is that we've got to let it dry a little bit. But it is pretty fast. Shades are pretty quick at drawing usually. And so I'm just going to wash my brush off. Yeah, the glow effect in the sword, I think, is going to be really cool, especially with those runes that he has on him. I think that's going to be really neat. I'm going to have to use a little bit of air on this guy just to dry him off, but just drying off the, washing off this brush here. What's fun about shade is it, it's so uh, watered down, like thinned out, that a little bit of water on it, and it pretty much just cleans the brush by itself. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, and just hang it to dry. 
So again, let's take a look. Is there anything left in this? I don't want to make sure. I want to make sure there's no water in there. No, there isn't. So you could just like a little bit of air on them, and that'll help dry it a bit. You don't want to go too close because you don't want it to leave those areas where you know it's getting the. Oh, I think I might have forgot a spot there, but you know what? The gray dry brush after. Oh, a little too close there. It's going to move it around a bit, the, the paint. Oh, I forgot a whole part of his leg right there. Darn. Okay, well, let's fix that up right now before I forget. Uh, i got to get that shade again. Because I don't want to touch any of the air part. Well, I mean, I could, but I don't really want to. I really need to get... Uh, I don't want to touch... like Because i got to do that dry brushing on here. So let's go just grab a little bit here. And I forgot that complete area here. Jeez. And bottom of his foot there, too. And it doesn't matter if I get that claw bit there. And where was that spot I missed a while ago? I think it was right here. Oh, yeah, right there. Just a little. There we go. I still find this part a bit weird now but i think it's okay and did i get everything on the top yeah i did okay just want to make sure i think i forgot some of his finger though here let me get a little bit darker not a big deal there okay yeah so like i said like it's fun to shade but technically now we got to wait a little bit should dry pretty quickly His thumb? Did I miss his thumb? Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, the dry brush, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Just washing off my brush here. Hope you guys are having a good day. Hope you enjoyed so far the live stream. I, like I said, I won't be able to get through the whole painting process. Uh, the channel has now recently become a partnership with YouTube, so I am able to take members. So if you're interested, there's three different tiers. There's the base, the mid-tone, and the highlight tiers. Uh, the, the highlight tier, you get exclusive videos. You're going to have exclusive voting. You're going to have uh, member-only chats, member-only live streams. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. The base one, you're going to get some emojis. You're going to get some badges. You know, all the goody goodies. Just get in there. Make sure this guy is always dry here. So, yeah, like I said, some people actually use like a hair dryer. Oh, it looks like. Oh, my God. I missed. How did I miss all of that? Wow. This is horrible. Guys, how did I miss all of that? Oh, okay, I got his thumb. Okay, perfect. But now, missed his inside of his tail, and it looks like a part of his whole leg right there. Look at that. Look at I missed all of that. How in the world did I miss all of that? But thankfully, easy to fix. I think now, I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to get around the nails here. There we go. Okay. Much better. Oh, you know what? That's bugging me. There we go. <laughs> you know, when something bugs you, you just got to fix it, right? You just got to. Yeah, so you can become a member. Uh, you can join the different tiers. You can super chat with me while I'm doing live streams. Uh, I think future live streams, though, will be either just building or just painting or even just some tips and tricks. I want to continue regular painting videos, um, less tips on different chips. Like I've been doing recently there where I did the, the corrosion thing and I did the uh, what's a better in an airbrush, uh, stuff like that. I think there's so many videos out there. You guys don't need me to start doing that as well. I'm just going to stick to painting my minis. I'm just going to grab the airbrush again here just to make sure. This, this I'm hoping he's going to be dry real soon now does he oh so he's got 
He's got some skin and some hoses on him. There's a big blotch of... Oh, well. Yeah, so he's got like... Oh, that's going to be interesting to paint. Although, I mean, a little tiny brush, and we'll get it in there. Let's go and get... See that shade was starting to run down the leg there a bit. All right. Now, you guys are going to learn another technique. If you haven't seen this before, it's called dry brushing. This is super fun. Although, I don't use paper towels. I use cork board or whatever it's called. I'm going to push him back a little bit. That's what I use. I use this stuff because it's got rigid edges, right? All sorts of different like edges where you want your brush to get into. And uh, the point is that you don't want to remove any of that dampness from that. So you said a gray. I have a Dawnstone. Let's see here. I've got maybe three choices here. It might work. I got a Storm Fang, which is like a light grayish blue. I've got a Dawnstone, which is a very light gray. And I got a long beard gray, which is almost white. That might be a little too, too white, but you know what? It'll be between these two, I think. And then this one as a very, very dry brush. This is gonna be more of a heavy dry brush uh, than those two. And I think he's almost ready for me to do that because it's gonna be harder on the skin here to get into there because of the those uh, those tubes that are in there. And they still got a lot of wet paint in there. If we go like this a bit more. Make sure you dry. Usually you let these guys sit for a couple hours or whatever. Not even, maybe half an hour and it'll pretty much be dry. But I want to speed this up for you guys a little bit more so you can see pretty much. And like I said a while ago, whenever you're doing this, you're especially airbrushing or whatever, well, that glue is really working into there and making the model a lot harder to, uh, to get. All right. Okay. Let's do some dry brushing. Which one? Which one are we doing? <laughs> storm fang okay yeah it'll be very it'll be a light blue but like i said if we do the the, the white on top of it so look this here look at this paint it is literally a dry paint is called all right so it is it's more mushy it's more like a gelatin see like it's it's interesting right and then i just try and take off as much as i can there you go. Okay. And then you just slightly go over your edges and look how it brings out those details. Now it's going to, like I said, it's going to be way harder to get into that stomach area. But look at that face right off the bat, what it did. And you pretty much always want to go on a downward motion. You don't want to go like back and forth kind of thing and side to side, because then you're just going to get everywhere with it. I just put a little bit more here. I'll leave a little bit more on the brush this time, not as much off. And just pat it right down. And see, it's actually getting those like symbols on him that are raised to pop now, which will make it a lot easier to do the highlights on those later. So we're just trying to get all the tail here. Look at this. We're going to get that tail. Dawnstone? Oh, well, sorry, Speed. Or Tyler, I should say. I called him Speed because I know him from my gaming. But yes, Tyler. Uh, sorry, we went with the light, 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 light blue. Just slowly or trying to grab every raised edge. Oops, I said downward motion. Here I am going upwards. See, I have to go sideways at some areas because, like, you're getting in the front. But you pretty much want to go where 
there's light, right? Like the point is that you have light hitting from a certain area. I guess I got to go a little bit more back and forth. Okay. There we go. How's that looking? That's looking pretty decent, isn't it? I think my camera might be falling a bit here. Let's bring that up a bit. There we go. I think that might be better. Yeah, that looks really cool. I'd like to get a little bit more inside there, but I think that's pretty good. Get his hands a bit more. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but now, okay, we're going to do that long beard gray. All right, we're going to, doesn't matter if the brush is still a bit dirty, because look, it, there's nothing on it. It's very dry. So we're going to use this long beard gray now. And this we're really just going to try and touch just the top of it. Like just and very take off almost everything on the brush. We barely don't want anything. Like you can see there's barely nothing. Look, it just comes off a little bit. And watch when I hit just touch, just like very like that. Just your raised edges. Very, 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 very lightly. Not hard at all. Because if you go too hard, you're going to get splotches instead of, oh, like I did there. Again, you just want to go downwards. Oh, I'm getting a little too hard here on this there. You're going to go downwards here on his back a bit. Go on his hand. Isn't that neat what it does? Really just grabs like the effect of light. Like really on the tail, you just want to hit like the top raised part of it. And on the back here is a little bit harder to get just the edges, but look at that. What do you guys think of that? Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I love the face. A little bit more white. There we go. Look at that. That looks awesome. <laughs> He's looking good. He's looking good. All right. We'll put away these dry brushes and these dry paints for now. So these are just like old, cheap makeup brushes, by the way. You don't have to buy super expensive dry brushes from companies because you're just going to have the time you're going to ruin them. But I've done a good job cleaning them really, really well, um, making sure they dry really well. That uh, Stormfang Blue, though, can stick quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I want to get back into model. Well, I, I mentioned model building a while ago with the airbrush. Uh, if I had an airbrush when I was younger, geez, when I painted those cars and all that stuff, instead of going with a huge brush and all that, it would have been such nicer details. Plus, you wouldn't have all the brush strokes, you know, that you get a lot of times when you're building miniatures and building or painting miniatures, building, uh, painting model, model cars and all that cool stuff. So it's uh, airbrushing. I love it. I love it for especially uh, for... Um, not just base coating, but uh, what you call it, uh, priming and Zenithal highlighting. Now that's awesome. Zenithal highlighting there, that is a great airbrushing with Zenithal highlighting is amazing. All right, we'll put away this cork board. Yeah, they're makeup brushes. Well, not used, but like I have a whole bunch of different kinds here. So there's like, you know, just different like if i want smaller edge like if i would have wanted to get really into the nooks and crannies i've also got like really smaller ones i've even got some like oops flat ones to really get so like you can use like see here like this is very very thin and that goes like really well to get inside if you wanted to like right into those little areas and just yeah i think i got these off of amazon for very cheap uh mso i mean makeup brushes so if, if you're doing terrain um just this is just a side note i know i'm not talking about but look, look at this thing this this is actually a paintbrush uh but 
it's great for larger. Like I could have really went on this whole thing and just did all that. But uh, all right. Now I think we're ready for what do we want to do next? We could do the skulls and his spine. I really don't know what to do with that part of that. I don't know if that's like I didn't I didn't put it as a skin. So we're going to have to put that as something. We could do his horns. Do that blade. That would be awesome. And I just picked up this new uh, technical paint that maybe would be a cool base for this. Can we, let's try it. You want? Know can I try it? You guys don't mind if I try it, right? Why not? Worst case is, got to prime it again or put another primer. Look at this thing. It's called Nihilac Oxide. So you, I use this for the corrosion stuff, right? So this is very liquid paint. Like, look at this. It's like a water paint. I'm going to try putting it on the entirety of the blade, just the blade, okay, and see if with the gray, it's going to give like a, almost, this is going to be part of the glow effect, but I don't know, if, like if I was going to do this, I'm not going to be able to do that glow effect. I might have to shoot down later this way with the airbrush just to get it on top of them to really make it glow, but I want to see if this is going to make it pop or not. So we're going to do that. I'm going to get a good brush here. All right. Dip it in there. And let's see, go to town with this sucker. Oh, okay. This probably would have been metal. I just thought of it. I should have painted this in metal first, like metallic, like silver or something, and then put this over it. As you can see, it just, it does just like a shade or a contrast paint. It gets into the, um, the areas, making a little bit more. like raised edges kind of thing. That's going to be a, I think I might have to do this in red or something like that. Or what do you think of that? Does that look awesome or does that look stupid? What do you think? I don't know. Hard to say. Let's go on the other side here. Just going to go around. I can make it have a silver effect after, but if I don't like how it dries up after, maybe I'll put some silver paint on top of it and then redo this or maybe just go a different color completely. I don't know, I'm liking sort of what it's doing. But yeah, I think a silver paint would have made it really pop. Hmm. Not sure. Looks kind of neat. We'll see once it's drying. We'll take a look. Keep an eye on it. Like a magic blade. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sort of like a magic blade, right? I mean, he's a demon, no? <laughs> does he have a mat? Does a demon have a magic blade normally? <laughs> I'm not sure. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Just gonna dry that off. All right, that looks nice. Okay, so. We could do that loincloth of his. Now, the loincloth has some bones on it. What I think I want to do to that loincloth is actually use a contrast paint. I'm going to use a contrast paint, and I think red would be nice. And I think I'm going to go with uh, Flesh Terror's Red. Okay, so this is a contrast. Usually you use this on a white paint or very light paint, but because this is kind of dark and he is kind of a darkish, grimly looking fella, um, we're going to go with this Flesh Terror's Red just on the loincloth there. And the armor, what I think we're going to do is we're going to go with a dark color armor first, the whole thing. Uh, either dry brush on top, like a lighter color, and then finish or and then do a wash. And then do another highlight or a dry brush again. All right. Let's see here. Um, by the way, I have all sorts of brushes. And certain brushes do certain things. And some of them are starting to get really old like this one here. But that's okay, right? All right. I will be ending the stream very shortly, actually. Um, sorry to say. But, you know, let's, let's just do this. And let's maybe show you some of that armor color I want to do. So let's just slowly get in there. 
Look at that. It's just going to flow down. I'll get those chains after and those little bone pieces. So I just got to be careful because there's a little part there. We're just going to go down. As you can see, this flows right into the, uh, the crevices and all that. But you can see, though, that it's not popping out that gray like a lot. I don't care if I get that bone because it's just I want to make sure that I get every little crevice with this paint. And then I'll go over it later with an actual acrylic paint. And this is going to go right down to his toe. We just got to be careful here. We don't want to hit anything else too much. The base is not a big deal because I'm going to be basing that with some basing materials. All right, let's go to the back here. This is going to be a little touchy. You got to be careful because this brush is interesting. But it's actually going pretty good. Getting there. You can either go top to bottom or, you know, this is not a big deal because, like, as you can see, I pretty much hit everywhere. I think I got, oh, a little spot there. This is a lot easier to notice if I forgot something because you really see the gray pop out. As opposed to a while ago, it was a little bit harder. I think I got everything. Oh, there are those spots there. Okay. Look at that. That is just a beautiful red. You know, let that dry. You can easily do a dry brush on top of that of a, like, a lighter color, almost like a sand color if you wanted to, or like a light beige, and uh, just make it pop. Or you can take a... Um, what you can do is you can take, um, usually, you know, when you want a lighter color, you want to do highlights, you would simply uh, take the color you did, add a little bit of white to it, but that'll make it pink. So someone has been actually mentioning using a tan color, which I have one, and using that to um, highlight whatever color you've just done. So what I'm going to do now, because I'm almost done with the stream, I'm going to show you guys... I'm going to put some armor color on that. Oh, this didn't very clean very well, but it doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to take out, I think what I want to use is a very dark color. Now, either, I don't know if I want Screaming Bell, Warp Lock Bronze, not Balthazar Gold, that's for sure. Not Lead Belcher just yet, and not... Rune Lord Brass? Oh, we got Rune Lord Bla Brass. I think this might be too orange. This one, I have a problem with the bottle. I've just picked this one up recently, Rune Lord Brass. I think this might be what I'm going to use because then if I put a wash on it after, it'll darken it down a bit. I could put some of this as a dry brush on top of it. Yeah, we're going to try this Warp Lock Bronze. I have not tried it before. We're going to go into that one and grab my brush. Grab the brush. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you can put, I uh, have a dark wash. I even have a red crimson wash. Once it dries, you can see it's still pretty wet and shiny. So yeah, wash will do pretty cool on it. So like I said, this is a brand new paint. I'm going to shake it up a lot. And we're going to do that big shoulder pad right here. That's what we're going to do for this. Oh, and these, by the way, you can see they're not dropper bottles like other paints I have. That's one thing with Games Workshop is they go with these, these top things here. Now, I just forgot. I forgot to wa rinse, uh, put water on my brush. It's going to be a little stiff. But uh, let's just go. Oh, okay. Oh, this might be a little, a little too bright. But with that wash on it, it's going to darken it down. It's going to get into all these little areas here and really do that. And then with the dry brushing or highlighting after, I think it's going to look amazing. I don't want to hit that red. I just realized I'm putting my thumb near that red there. I might not be getting enough paint on my brush here. Oh, yeah. I think this is nice, this brass color. Now, because I'm not a Warhammer player, I don't play Warhammer. I don't collect Warhammer. Um, normally, I, I used to paint some of the Warhammer. I painted some old Warhammers before, like Dark Vengeance. I got it from someone, and I painted that up. But, 
yeah, pretty much the viewers here uh, on a poll said they didn't want to see me paint Warhammer stuff on the channel. I mean, there's a million YouTubers painting Warhammer stuff. Of course, they get the views with it because that's what people are looking for. But I, I try to stick to what I like to do, which is uh, miniature like board games. And I love Parabellum's um, Conquest. I love playing that game. And by the way, I have an affiliate code. So if you're actually looking into getting into a wargaming game, uh, Parabellum eShop and put East Mini 10. All right. East Mini 10, all in one word. You'll save 10%. And it's also going to support the channel. So you can buy yourself some minis. And like I said, there's something just so serene about building a miniature. It's a little bit more fun than I find in painting the miniature because you're trying to fit it together. You're trying to make it look cool. Uh, so like, like this one had a bunch of options. So you're able to do like different things and have fun with it. So yeah. Oh, look, you know, that is looking quite awesome. Now I think this is going to go on. Oh, I actually completely forgot a part of his arm right there. Just noticed that. Um, I think this is going to go on the top part of this. Underneath is going to be maybe a darker, but I think this color should go on these leg pauldrons as well. So let's, uh, and then by the time I'm done that, I'll probably be able to put my wash on it. It should be dry enough. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer with metallic paints to dry, but I'm not very patient. I don't usually wait long, so I just go and slap it on, but it usually works out fine. There's usually no issues. And you know what? I love having put that there. I think I didn't put it on the other side because it looks stupid, but I think on this side, it looked really cool. I think it was fun to do that. I think that was a good idea. And uh, don't forget, you can become members. I would love to see you become a member of the channel. So if you're watching right now, uh, take a look at the join button. Or if you want to do a little super chat right now, if you want to have a little dollar in your pocket, you can send me or any amount you want with a super chat. You can go ahead and do that right now. Let's see here. <laughs> yep. Oh, you know what? This this Rune Lord Brass looks nice. Oh, I think I missed a little spot there. Yeah, and there. There we go. Okay, we'll do the other pauldron. Is that what they're called? No, 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 they're not pauldrons. This is on his, oh, he's got a belt too. Oh, that, we'll have to do that a different color. All right. And he's got these tubes too we're going to have to do in a weird color. Maybe just a silver color maybe with some black wash on it, like a dark wash. So there. So hopefully this will be dry right here, and I'll be able to put that wash on like I was telling you. And I think it's going to be Agrax Earthshade. I usually put that on my metals just to, there we go. Oh, that looks awesome. That is nice. I do have to say that the uh, Citadel, our Games Workshop um, Metallics, have a nice range and are very like easy to like nice coverage and they have a base and a layer color right so the layer is for what you would do after like i would go on top of this with that layer but i could do that after i do the wash so if i if i have this paint there should be a layer that goes with it i just got to figure that out after okay so oh my thing well i mean i don't necessarily have to get underneath it but it would be nice to just have it not show like that. Oh, and there's a little area here. There you go. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I want to do, I want to get, so it's going to be pretty much that here. I don't know where it stops or where it begins. So we're just going to go where I think here. So just get, I know this is kind of stupid doing this part first. Because technically, I should have done the inside, like the bottom color first, and then come up with this one. <laughs> but that's eh, just me. I like making my life difficult. See, and I'm just hitting it, almost like doing like a dry brush. Just slowly grabbing the top layer part, not getting the inside. Just slowly going. 
So this guy, you can see, has been like, well, I mean, we're building him too, but it's been a good hour and a half, but I've been talking with you guys. Uh, so sometimes miniatures can take you a long time. It depends on the amount of details. Uh, I usually just go with tabletop ready, not uh, what you might call it, uh, parade ready, like they call it sometimes, or like superstar ready kind of thing. I like having my miniatures on the table, but I want to take my time a little bit more on this one because it is a nice miniature. Uh, and not just because it's Warhammer, but I just liked it and I found it cool because I got it also on liquidation. <laughs> if ever you can check out, uh, if you're in the area where I live, you can go to Butsik FDB and they have a bunch more of Warhammer stuff on liquidation because Games Workshop is redoing the exact same miniature, just a different look. Yep, that's right. You heard it here first. No, you didn't. You heard it on the other channels that say about it. All right. I'm just going to clean my brush and then we're going to apply just on that one there just to show you guys what it does. And then we're going to call it a wraps on that. So we're just going to put that wash. Just going to clean the brush here. Oh, that really got dirty in there. Jeez, I didn't realize how that Rune Lord brass got inside the brush. There we go. That did the job. Okay, and since we're doing a wash, we can grab this old, this other brush here I already used, but should be okay. It looks like it's still got a bit of red on it. All right, the wash we want, I said, was Agrax Earthshade. This is usually a good one for golds and brasses and stuff like that, so Agrax Earthshade. I know I haven't been using much uh, Army Painter stuff, but I'll probably, be, I, I have that mostly for, uh, like, I'll be doing the skulls with the Army Painter uh, skeleton bone. Um like the belts and all that, like this thing here, these things here will all be army painter. This I do not like. I'm probably going to cover that up. It looks weird. I'm probably going to put a silver and then something else. All right, let's get this washed. So watch what it does. Look at the difference like right off the bat. And you put this on quite thick. You don't want to rub too much. You want to get it right into those... Nice crevices, get that nice shadowing effect. Look at that. Like, look at the difference there and there. Once that dries, I'm going to do all these nice little details. Uh, we're going to be doing his horn and all that. So if you want to see how this guy turns out, you're going to have to become a member because this is going to be a member-exclusive video. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys uh, do join. It's much appreciated. This is, as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of, hobby stuff in this it is not a cheap hobby but it is a fun hobby and i want to keep making stuff for you guys i want to be up to date with board games that come out that have miniatures um and so on and so forth i want to thank the viewers that have been in here chatting with me tonight and having fun i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the live stream uh if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button and uh, hope for more of these as well in the future hit that like button on this as well to support to hopefully get this through the YouTube algorithm. And like I said, if you guys want to become members, there's three levels. There's your base, your mid-tone, and your highlight levels, uh, just like I showed you guys a bit tonight. Uh, so anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will see you all in the next one.